Well, hello there, my dear friends, and welcome back to the Scott Reed Project. Now, today we are going to be doing a sausage making masterclass. Now, I'm going to show you the whole process. I'm going to talk you through the process, talk about the ingredients, talk about the kit we use. Now, this is my recipe, a genuine butcher's recipe. When you make these sausages, these are the kinds we make in a butcher's shop. Now, two things we're making sausages. One is temperature. Everything needs to be cold, really cold, to the point of I've put my fat in the freezer just to get it firm, and also my meat. More on that later. Obviously, chilled water, nice ice cold. And what you see here then is what I call a quarter of a chopping. Now normally butchers, when we make sausages, we use 14 pound of meat, which we call a chopping. With this being a quarter, there's three and a half pound of meat. Now within that meat, you want, say, 70% lean. Here you can see I've got belly meat and shoulder meat and 30% fat, decent quality pork bat fat. Because the second rule of sausage making is you don't use a lot of ingredients, but what you do use need to be the best. It's a case of you get out what you put in. Now, the days have gone of just putting in, let's be honest, lips and assholes, you know, it, you can't get away with that anymore. And you don't want to, you want a quality product. So always make sure your meat is as good as you can get. Obviously by belly, by shoulder and back fat. Now if you can't get that and you want three and a half pounds, just go and get some nice belly pork and you should be fine with that. Next we are using rusk which is a yeastless bread. I will talk a bit more about that in a bit where you can get that from and then we have got sausage seasoning. Now there are tons of these out there. Again, I will talk through where I get mine from. I use two companies, absolutely brilliant. I use them all the time. And then in front of you here, you will see some leeks. We are going to be making my pork and leek sausage. To me, pork and leek has got to be the finest combination. It just works so well. And you know yourself, there are tons and tons and tons of sausage recipes. Me, I stick to a few of the classics, a thick and thin pork, my pork tomato and Worcester sauce, pork and leek, I will make a pork and apple with cider and also a lamb merguez. And then if I'm doing venison, venison and red wine, but the process is all the same. Now, the thing with sausage making is people don't know a lot about is the fat does not take on the seasoning. So what I will do then, I've got my two and a half pound of lean and I'm going to put it in this bowl. Now I love all these old containers. I go to antiques fairs, collectors fairs. These are absolutely brilliant for this kind of work. So two and a half pound of lean pork. I have got two ounces of my seasoning of choice. Now I use Lucas seasoning or I use a company called Weschenfelder up north in Middlesbrough. I will talk a bit about those a bit later on. So two ounces of seasoning to two and a half pounds of lean pork. I'm just gonna put that on, give it a mix, and then I'm gonna shove this in the fridge. Now what this will do, it will pack a real punch of flavor. Now some butchers, they will make their sausages by putting it in a bowl chopper, they'll put their fat in, their lean in, they will put their seasoning in, and they will put their rusk in dry and their water. But I'm an old fashioned guy, I make it old fashioned, I make them by hand, and it really makes a difference. And this is the way I do it, so if you do it like this, you will be on to a winner. So, without repeating myself, two and a half pound of lean-ish meat. So like I said, belly or shoulder, and two ounces of seasoning. Don't worry, I will put this all down in the comments. Next, we are on to our rusk. Again, I get this from Weschenfelder which I will put the comments in the bottom, the links and everything for you guys to 
uh, go and purchase this stuff. They're great guys, they will send it you. So what we need then for this recipe is half a pound of rusk. Basically, get your scales on, eight ounces, and that's the rusk we need. I don't know if you can see that reading on there. Eight ounces of rusk. Now here's the mad bit. I want to weigh out a pound of water. We always measure our liquids over here in the UK making sausages. Now that's half a pound of rusk and a pound of water because the rusk will take up two to two and a half times its weight. Now, there you can see a pound of water. We put our water into another bowl and we add our half a pound of rusk. Always the rusk to the water. It's just the way I've always done it. It's a very, very, very old school way of doing things. So we give that a mix. Now this you could do about two hours before you start making your sausages because you want it to take up the water. This is the binding agent. It also takes up and keeps the juices in the sausage. That's how you get a fantastic, juicy, succulent banger. So, a little mix in, and that goes in the fridge for about an hour, two hours. And when it comes out, you'll see it's all puffed up and ready to go. Okay then, that meat has been sat in that seasoning. The seasoning's got right in there. So what we need to do then is mince our lean and our fat. So I've got my mincer here, again from Weschenfelder, a fantastic bit of kit. Now, if you're serious about sausage making, get in touch with these guys. You know, this is not a plug for them. You know, I buy my own stuff there, but they have got everything you need. And something like this is gonna cost you about 350 quid, but it's gonna last you a long, long time. So on a coarse plate I am going to put through my meat and my fat. Now again this is a fantastic I suppose catering bowl. This is what a lot of the old school butchers would use. It allows you to get your hands in and mix all your mix together. Because I don't use a machine here I use my hands so we can build up that primary bind and get a proper consistency. So I am just going to mince this through on a coarse plate once. As you can see then, my fat and my lean, just to reiterate, two and a half pound of lean meat and a pound of pork back fat. Next, I'm going to add my rusk. As you can see how it's changed. We have soaked it in there. There's still plenty of giving that, meaning it will take up more moisture, which is great, which means the sausages won't leach out their fat, which gives you one flavor, two, a juicy, succulent sausage. So as you can see, just with my hands, I'm just breaking it up. and just getting it into this bowl. I mean, I bought this at, again, a collector's fair. It was 20 quid. Now, what I like about this is I like to think of all the people who have used it before. I'm an old romantic, you know what I mean? I'm old school, I love the old fashioned ways, and I love the old fashioned kit. And if you can upcycle it, recycle it, absolutely brilliant. And to be honest, for you to buy a container like this, to make sausages modern you know you're talking a few bob but uh, yeah I absolutely love this so just getting a preliminary mix next I want to put my leeks through the mincer so for my pork and leek sausages I use fresh leeks now if you can go to any butchers sundry mun you will see they do packs of say pork and leek, pork and tomato, pork and herb, so on and so forth, and it comes dry mixed in a pack. 
But what I do is I use just a basic pork sausage seasoning. There I'm using Lucas Master Choice. I think it's brilliant. And then what I do is I add fresh leeks to it. It gives it a better flavour, a better colour and an all round better product. So what I've got there then is a pound and a half of leeks which I'm just going to take through the mincer again and add it to my sausage mix. And you see the colour this comes out of at the end, you will totally get what I'm on about. look fabulous. So again, I'm just going to give this another quick mix up to distribute it and then what we do is we send it through the mincer again. But first I just want to evenly distribute those fantastic ingredients because that is basically our sausage mix ready to go. Now the smell in here is absolutely divine. And if I could just show you a bit of that mix, I mean, I've only preliminary mixed it. If I could show you a bit, can you see the flex of green? Smells superb. And what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to put that on chill for 10 or 15 minutes. Keep that temperature nice and cold because what will happen, gets too hot, the fat, the back fat starts to melt, especially in the machine. If the machine gets too hot, it starts to cook the fat, smears the fat, and that will ruin the texture. So a good tip, if it's a hot day you're making them, make sure your ingredients are really cold. And you can also periodically put ice cubes through your mincer head. Or another good tip is to take your mincer head off and put it in the freezer before you start and then you'll be ready to go with your cold meat, your cold fat, your nice ice cold water for your rusk and then your mince head nice and chilled and you won't have a problem. So there it is, my basic mix once through the mincer. So as you've just seen then, that's been through the mincer a second time, the complete mix. If you have a look, it's almost worm-like. Now this is the important part. This is where we develop the texture. And you know when you get a sausage and you bite into it, you get that snap. It's all about how it was mixed. Of course, in butcher shops, they would put it in a mixer or the old school the bowl chopper but I like to mix mine by hand and we're looking for what they call a primary bind. Now you can see that happening in front of you there what was once worm like is now starting to look like sausage meat and it's a case of just getting your hands in I know it doesn't look very good I know the food Nazis out there will be going, oh my God, he's using his hands. But this is the way it was done. It's old school, you know. You're not eating it, I'm eating it. Relax, we're making sausages. It's cool, baby. So, give it a good kneading, a good mix. And you're looking for a consistency of when you pick it up, it stays on your hands so you know you're getting there and if it's a little bit dry we can add a little bit of water so just a touch just like that and we'll continue to get this mixed up now like I said this was a quarter chopping now this is a great size chopping to start on give you roughly about five pound of sausages 
you can see that's getting really sticky with and just take your time you know relax put a bit of music on and just keep working your sausage meat and there it is on chill then have a tidy up wash my hands and we'll get in and pipe these quickly and show you the finished article there you go my pork and leek looking quite unique right then on to the fun part pipe in these fantastic sausages just look at that mix now if you just wanted to make a plain sausage leave out the leeks and you will have an absolutely outstanding pork sausage right then we need to put these into skins or casings i always use naturals you can see here this is how they come these are hogs casings which give you a thicker sausage beautiful they are natural come in salt and all you do is you get your desired lengths i normally go about a meter for a pound roughly that is and then i swill it under cold water then I open up the end of the casing and swill cold water. Then what we do is in warmish water, I put these cases in. Let me just show you the difference a minute. And then just let them soak for an hour, two hours. So there is a normal casing as they come then, packed in salt dry. And then when you have soaked them, you can see how pliable they are. You can actually see that that is an actual skin. So like I was saying then, hogs casings for thickish sausage, lambs casings traditionally for chipolatas or as we call them thin sausage, breakfast sausage and then they go up in stages for different products. Now I get my casings from a couple of people, uh, a butcher's sundries I get them from, also Dial which is Lucas's part of the group, the spelling's there, it's an odd word, great company, I should put the comment down in there. And that's the casings and then I'm going to stuff it using this fantastic fantastic machine again from Weschen Fowder this costs about 120 quid now this is absolutely ideal for the home sausage maker it will hold a six pound mix well brilliant that's about five so you'll get all that mix in that machine and this machine is a little demon stuffer I love that name the little demon stuffer and this is the one that Heston Blumenthal that mad scientist stroke culinary I don't know what he is genius maybe uh, use this in his in search of perfection program you know it really is a great bit of kit and the beauty with this is it comes with three different size nozzles I've got my thick sausage one on there salamis and of course your chipolatas and what I like about this and especially the guys at Weschenfelder they sell all the parts so if the o-ring goes there you can replace it there's a valve in there you can replace it it's just a great bit of kit uh, so yeah basically all we got to do then is fill up our barrel and start piping these bad boys out so it couldn't be easier then with our barrel get our mix and you want to get a handful and basically the first one slam it down if you have a look in there you want to just re get rid of any air that was in there so give it a good old chuck try and get it everywhere always helps and like I said it takes a six pound mix look at that absolutely perfect so I will put that on the machine then. So I'm just gently winding, just gently, just to get any air out. And then we are gonna load on our casings. So I get a bit of water on the nozzle, find my end of my casings. You watch, I've gone for the long end. Marvelous, always the way. And there you can see now, like I was saying, how they have changed once we have soaked them. If you can see there what we need to do then is quite simple now you can see how thick a sausage they can be over the end and then just holding your thumb and your finger which gets rid of the excess water just gently start threading your skin onto 
your nozzle. Same principle if you're doing thicks, thins, salamis. I mean, if you want a pipe black pudding or haggis, it's the same principle. Okay then, holding the end just till you start getting a fill. As you can see, it's starting to come then. You will get the thickness of your sausage. I just want to show you what we got there. It's quite tricky with one. And then basically, you just start to fill and let it pretty much come off on its own. I mean, in the scheme of things, these are quite big skins, quite thick. They come in different sizes, different grades. I think these were 32, 34. But as you can see, I'm not overstuffing them. If you get the odd air hole, that's not a problem. We can get rid of that. But basically, you just let it cycle through your hands and pretty much fill naturally, you know. If you were doing this in a butcher shop, you'd most probably have a designated table and they would drop into them. But if you're at home, home sausage making, you know, just get someone to gently crank the handle for you and just guide these sausages out. Okay, on to the tying part. Now I have got a designated sausage tie-in video already on my channel. It will be down in the comments. Check it out. I'll just show it you quickly though. This is where you can judge what size sausage you like. Me, I like to have a quite a decent sized banger. I mean, these are monsters. So I take one, I pinch it, measure it against the other one, pinch up the other way. As you can see, two the same, and then just there. And that gives us three. This is a real simple way. And then cross that one over, round and through, and then that gives you your starting loop, as you can see there. I'll just do a couple for you, but like I said, I have got a designated uh, sausage stuffing video. Now, obviously, make these whatever size you like. In a butcher's, they would be not so thick. These are really, really thick skins. Uh, quite tricky to fill when they're like this. So uh, I will just go over and prick them and release any air. But as you can see, they are quite, quite the thick banger. But pretty much there is your sausages made. And I'm just going to, any excess there, I'm going to tie off and then cut off any remaining skins. And there you have it. the SRP pork and leek sausages. Proper banging bangers. So here they are then, the finished article as you can see. Beautiful looking, the flecks are green, the flavors will be fantastic. What I need to do with these then is hang these up just at about room temperature if you're in your kitchen for about an hour, then move them into your fridge at about five degrees centigrade leave them overnight minimum a day, let the flavours all mould together, let them bloom and they will be fantastic. But there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that sausage making masterclass. And I know it was a lot to take on board, but I try to make it as easy as possible for you making sausages at home. And if you follow the steps, you too will be making great, great bangers like that. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Scott Reed Project, the sausage making masterclass. And do look out for the follow on video when I cook a few of these. It'll just be a quick little video just to show you how they turn out and how juicy, meaty and succulent they are. Now, I know there was a lot of info to take on board. I will leave all the comments of the ingredients and where to get them from and also the kit if you want to check it out ring the guys up or get it, uh, in touch by email but uh, if you do get the chance do give it a go there is nothing better than making your own sausages and believe me i've done a few of these videos before and people have gone out they bought the kit and started to make their own sausages and they haven't looked back because once you make your own you know what goes in them you make them to your liking everything else pales 
into significance. Right then, thank you for coming on this journey with me. Please click subscribe if you like. I've got a vast back catalogue and of sausage making. I release a video every week. Also find me on my social media, Facebook, Scott Ree, or the Scott Ree Project page, and on my Twitter, at the Scott Ree Project. All that remains for me to do then is let these bloom, keep my hands off them, it's hard, you'll know if you make your own sausages, it's tempting to put them in the pan, and then tidy up. Thanks for watching, take care.